Yo, 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 guys, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, we're back in the game, back in the game, back in the yo. game, man, so Redman, what up, how's it been, bro, how has it been? Uh, bro, I've been chilling, I've been chilling. Wait, wait, wait. Of... did you have, like, a shave, have you shaved? Yeah, yeah no, I shaved, I shaved my beard, I shaved my beard, uh, yeah, I got, mm-hmm. to be honest with you, it's, uh, summertime, it's kind of, it's pretty, it's been pretty hot, especially when, like, I'm working out, or I'm going out for a run, mm-hmm. like, the beard's just, like, having a scarf on your face, so, um, I just wanted to like sort of trim it down a little bit just to make it a little bit easier, even though summer's almost over. But you know, so, 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 but like, because see for me, because we I, I do Celsius, so I do really understand mm-hmm. Fahrenheit. So, like, about how warm is it now? Like, what's like the can the, the Canadian summer to be honest with you? Like, let me check the weather. Like, to be honest, no matter what the number is, it's just it's just, it's just very humid. HH, that's the thing mm-hmm. is the humidity is what kills it. Like, today's like it's 20, 23 degrees, or so is that know, Fahrenheit or Celsius? Uh, that's uh, I'm pretty sure it's uh, I'm pretty sure it's uh, let me get check which one it is because I actually yeah. don't know the difference between any of them. Uh, no, no, no we're not, 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 we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, yeah, we're not, we're not like Americans. I'm pretty sure it's Celsius. I, uh, yeah, we're, we're like the rest of the world, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, we do because if it's 23, that sounds like Celsius because if it's like then it'd be possibly like six, like 50 or, or 60 if it was sort of Fahrenheit, but no, because if it's 23, that's actually pretty good. That's that's sort of, yeah, what it's like, yeah. Actually, is there a? Oh no, there's no, no. I don't have a weather. On Actually, I, I like I, I, I've been caught out, man. I've, I've been for the longest time meaning to learn the difference between Celsius and Fahrenheit because, like, I like checking the weather for me is just something that I never really a, a skill that I never really picked up on. Well, never no, really I, cared for. I think for me because because I've never I've only visited America. Mm-hmm. Like I've never needed to use Fahrenheit. So yeah. like whenever guys say, "Oh my gosh, it's hundred degrees," I'm like, hundred degrees? What the hell?" Or yeah. then they say, "Oh my, it's, it's twenty degrees, thirty degrees." Oh, that's fine. But like, no, twenty degrees, uh, thirty degrees or ten degrees in Fahrenheit is super cold. Okay, so, so you know what? I'm, n- I'm never gonna forget this. Now. So Americans use Fahrenheit. The rest of the world uses Celsius. See, this is what annoys me, man. Like America, if America was just it would just conform, like they spent. Or this is gonna tie into our topic. They, yeah. they spent billions and billions and billions, if not trillions, on war. You can't spend like maybe like ten billion just on new infrastructure around the uh, around the country to put signs instead of making it miles, making it kilometers instead of making it. But, but, but you know, you know what? Celsius. Because 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 I used to cause remember when even growing up, I was that way. Why does America use everything differently? But it's like what's pissed me off was when I used to get video games because mm-hmm. like, most of the world uses PAL. Yep. But the, America uses NTSC. Yep. So for instance, like I think in Nigeria, whenever we get it something with. If if let's say like our, our American family was getting something, we said, "Man, don't get it from America because they have NTSC, and we have to yeah. use PAL." And so I was like, "Wait, why do you do everything differently?" But then, it's like a kid who's been living in the house for ages has now finally made it out of the house, and they want to be independent, mm. and they want to stand on their own two feet. So I think America senses that no, like this is part of our identity, and we want to separate ourselves from these UK guy, English guys who pretty much controlled us for all this time. So basically, once once we gained independence, we wanted to be independent in every facet of, of the way and have like our own thing. So our own and identity. So You know what I think it is also as well? It's, it's also money. Because like, think about it, like all the textbooks they have, all the street signages, all the weather stations, all that, like they all their metrics are in a specific way, right? Like, like mm. uh, miles in... in, in uh, Fahrenheit. So for them to be able to like change it, like even if you're just changing every street sign on the street in America, that's very costly. It's going to take a lot of manpower. So like they're almost at the point of no return anymore. Oh, no, now. No, no, like, oh, oh. There's no, like, po- no, no, there's, there's no point. Like yeah. people are so used to it. It's so ingrained into people's psyche to now change everything. There's no point. So it's already no there point. like that. So my thing is like, like it used to bother me when I was young because again, I told you like mm. <laughs> if let's say someone, an uncle's, oh, do you want an Xbox or something? Uh, thanks, but there's no point because I can't play it either in England or in, in Nigeria. I, I didn't know system. that because I went, when I went back from Canada uh, to Syria, um, my PlayStation and all that stuff would not work on anything there. Like I was, I was mm. shocked. But I, I did end up going to like um, get like this like adapter that you plug your stuff into it and it sort of converts it so you could actually use it, play it on the TV. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Because I think there's like a converter that you can have. Yeah, oh, because like I had, I had a PlayStation. I had all these games and I couldn't play them. It was like torture, you know. Especially when yeah. you're a kid, like and going back home, like this stuff is not readily readily available like it is here like here you go every household probably has like a console or something back there mm. but they're very expensive so like people don't really have them readily available but also another thing that also pisses me off is i don't know i don't know what plugs are using in canada so in england it's the three pin plug mm. but if not going to europe it's the two pin plug yep so, two pin. yeah so for instance like when i um 
went to Paris for like hol holiday, I had to ask at the reception that, oh, can I have a um, three adapter. pin adapter for, for because I, for some reason in Europe, I don't know whether it's whole of Europe, but I'm sure most of Europe they have a mm. two pin plug. Yeah, but in England circles, it's, it's, right? it's a three pin. Yes, basically it's like the two pins go inside of the thing. So, yep. so basically, so for instance, if let's say someone bought like a plug that was European and you have to use it in England, what you do is so you go to the socket, you you put it in. Now make sure that the socket is actually off, or so you like mm. shock yourself. Then you have like a pen, and you have to pretty much press the top pin to put it down and then put the put, put the whole pin thing. And this is before we knew how to get like a um adapter thing like way back in the, in the day. But like mm -hmm. some of that's sort of pissing me well, off. Well the good news is is like nowadays like uh, they build transformers into uh into like phone chargers and into like PlayStations and Xboxes and all that stuff. So like when you go all you need is just an adapter and mm -hmm. not no longer a converter. Because you know they how they convert electricity, oh, yeah, like yeah, 120 yeah. to 240, 240 to 120. Like that, back in the day, that was a big problem. But nowadays, like all, all like all these charges, all this stuff just have. So you see an adapter. And adapters are like typically cheap. Like here again, like where like I can get it for like, whenever I travel, I need to get one like for like ten bucks. That's it. You just get it, put it on the top, and you're good to go, and you're set. But I know for the UK, you guys have like those bulky uh, out. Like for example, like here is just like two prongs. Like that's yeah. it. You just plug in two prongs. I know in Syria we had the two, you know, the circular ones. Yeah, the two no, 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 like in England, it's the three ones. Like, yeah, the it's three. Like, it's like big. It's like this big, man. Like that. It's, yeah. it's, it's that. that so, yeah, man, but huge. for most things, it's like two prongs. Most simple. Yeah, here. It is a birthday that you put in. Fun, I fun fact: I know, I know why England went for that. That design is uh, pretty much for safety. That is the okay. safest. That is the safest design out of all of the designs because it actually like grounds it properly and it holds it in properly. Mm -hmm. Rather than like it, like properly F that I think no because look I was a brick at physics but mm -hmm. I think they said like you know you have to make sure that the plugs are properly F mm -hmm. together and so forth because because if they don't like F together then you can pretty much. Be pretty much shock yourself and look like Edward yep, Scissor. Yep. All right, so look, man. So, should we, should, 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 let's, let's get this in. Let's, let's, let's jump into it. it, man. Let's jump into it. So, let me first tell you my first reaction to this. You know, Actually, let's even go all the way back. Let's go all mm. the way, way back. So, um, Twin Tower disaster happens. Yep. September 11th, 01. I actually remember where I was. I was playing because we, we used to have preseason. Mm -hmm. Before the the main thing, so this is during our football season in school. So we, so I was we we're playing a preseason game. We then came back, and for some reason we just saw a whole bunch of people inside like the TV room. I was like, wait, what the hell is happening? And then suddenly people just say, oh man, you know, like planes are crashing into the thing. And I was just like, wait, what the hell? Then obviously, like I think I was calling and things because I think at the time my brother was living in. Um, I think, yeah, I think he was in New York. He was in mm -hmm. New York. So we just say, oh, he's safe. Blah blah. So I was like, wait, what the hell is going on? I remember just, and I remember the very next day, like, and I remember, I can remember so clearly where I was, we were going to, to class and someone had like the newspaper and just on the front was just the wreckage of the world that happened. I was like, damn. And the very next thing was, all right, boom, Bin Laden, these guys, Afghanistan, we're in. So boom, they went to Afghanistan because Afghanistan was obviously the hotbed of the Al Qaeda and so forth, and then boom, we're going to get to get a revenge. So, okay, all right, you know, makes sense. And then afterwards, I was like, Iraq, I was like, wait, wait a minute, wait, what, <laughs> where does Iraq come from? <laughs> then I was in Iraq, 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 because okay, well, chill. They said that's oh, they have, um, no, no, that's Iraq were also somehow involved. I was like, well, then it went from how Iraq is somehow involved in what happened in with the Twin Towers to weapons of mass destruction. I was like, and then they had the whole issue with the UN investigator who had to now go and prove they had weapons of mass destruction and so forth. So, and even before he even um, concluded his findings, um, the UN actually voted said that no, you can't invade. But because of the veto powers with the strongest nations, they basically vetoed the results and they just went in anyway. Even if the guy said, I've checked and he has no weapons of mass destruction. So I was like, and I, I remember fully when I just and I remember because I put the the radio on, and I was and I remember listening to when the first invasion happened because again like I've never lived within a war somehow you know, so obviously mm -hmm. I was not around for like, what's called Vietnam War, Korean War, blah blah blah. So I was like, damn. So I'm actually living through a war, you know, that involves the country that I'm in as well. So like this is like a war, war, war. 
But then I was thinking, that's how the hell did you go from Afghanistan? And there were clear links to the guys who perpetrated the Twin Tower disaster were in Afghanistan to Iraq. That makes no sense. And then very slowly, people just, they just sort of were able to use with the power of the media and coercion, convince people that, oh no, maybe even if he didn't have weapons of mass destruction, even if he wasn't really involved in the Twin Tower disaster, he's a really, really bad guy. And we should take him away and we are liberating them. Like, oh, what are you not liberating? So somehow you forgot about focusing on the revenge and getting the guys who did this to this. Like, wow. Then obviously, years go go by, Obama comes in and he's the guy that she finally gets Bin Laden and so forth. But then you read it deeper into it. Is this really Bin Laden and so forth? It wouldn't go into the whole conspiracy thing. Now it now takes us to me waking up and realizing that. So that I wake up and say, okay, the, the Taliban have taken over. I'm like, what? <laughs> What do you mean that they've taken over? So these guys have been here for several years. They've spent 90 billion on Afghan self-defense. They spent way more than that on just like <laughs> no, no, everything. To... And on that war, how much it cost the US, like the US? Oh, no, no, there? no. It's just probably, but, but like the figure I saw was, remember the remember the article I sent to you last night? Yep. Yeah, that's yeah, right, 90 right, billion. Yeah, no, 90 so, so billion. That's, that's, just, that, that's how much they, they sent them in aid, like, like for, in training. Mm. Right, but there's other figures as well, like all the equipment, the guns, all that stuff that like costs. It, like they spent way more than ninety billion over the past twenty years. So, okay, so let's just say ninety billion plus. Mm -hmm. so, so, so ninety billion plus. You've been here for years. You have the best equipment and so forth. Similar to the whole issue with um, Israel and Palestine, mm -hmm. that Israel have the training, they have the equipment, they have the money. Hence, why they can easily totally decimate whatever. Gaza and whatever the, the, the um, um, Palestine yeah. and Hezbollah come and throw them because they're just better trained with better equipment. So I thought, how do a, a guys with a bunch of AK 47s overthrow you in a matter of moments when you have the superior firepower? So I was like, and especially after reading that article, I said, like, it doesn't add up. It does not add up. Like, I'm, I'm missing something in that the amount of money spent, the amount of time spent, the amount of support you've given them it doesn't add up. Now, obviously, that school goes on to really explain the various nuances and so forth. Mm -hmm. But my thing, though, is it's funny. There was an image, and maybe I'll try. I'll try and pull up the image now. There's like a side by side image. You see, saw that footage of the people running after the military, the military yep. plane. This and basically something similar happened in Saigon. Yep, when the plane was leaving, and they showed that this is. Exactly the, the, the same. They're so just, like, I mean, grabbing on from the U.S. Embassy. That like that's an iconic image. Yeah. So 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 look. Let me pass the baton over to you. First off, when you just see the Taliban have now taken over and have control of Afghanistan, what was your first reaction to that? I, I wasn't surprised. Like first of all, look, and that's sad. No, no. Of course. Like the thing is, they is that look. You're talking about like like uh, let, let's go back let's go back right like um, to the 1980s like where we're like or the 70s even like when when there was Soviet Russia was trying to um, get into uh, go into Afghanistan. Now, mind you, whenever you're fighting a war in Asia, it's very very complex. You're talking about a very diverse continent, a very especially in Afghanistan. Afghanistan's all mountains. It's a mountain region. That's why it's so hard to get Al Qaeda because they're hiding in the mountains. Like you can't just reach them. They, even with aerial support, you can't even you can't even see properly and like locate where they're located at. That's why they were able to survive for so long because they survived fighting the Soviets. Now they survived fighting the Americans. Yep, same thing, essentially. Um, so when it comes to uh, when when you when you go back to the Soviets, that's where essentially the the, 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 the Taliban, where those groups originated, because they were able to galvanize people like and create a religious movement based off of the fact that there's a foreign Christian invader or like you know a European invader coming from the north, um, and, and, and for that they started pushing back, and that's when you had Bin Laden, uh, who uh, his father uh, was uh, was a was a was a uh, he owned a construction company in Saudi Arabia, which built like the very first American base in in, in Saudi Arabia was built by Bin Laden's father, Mohammed Bin Laden, and and Bin Laden, uh, he traveled to to Afghanistan to aid his brother, his Muslim brothers in the fight, right? And that's when America they saw that hey, look at these people, uh, how they're fighting off the Soviets. A small group is able like to fight off the Soviets. Soviets can't get rid of these guys, so let's start funding them. They started helping them. They started funding them, giving them oh, money. Oh, so we, we, we funding the Taliban. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 they funding the Taliban and Al Qaeda. They were funding. They were sending them direct aid because they were helping them to fight off the Soviets, right? Mm. Because at the time, if you've ever read the Kite Runner, the Kite Runner goes into detail about this, oh, okay. about how like the, the the whole Soviet war and like, like the Soviet between the Afghanis. Um. Anyways, so Afghanistan do end up succeeding in in in, in fighting them off, and then uh, they 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 pretty much almost gain a a bit of independence. That didn't last for long, obviously, because then as soon as Russia was out, the U.S. Came in. You have 2001. The war breaks out, right? Now, you're finding when the U.S. comes in to intervene and push the most. Because let's be honest, I guess it had nothing to do with 9/11. Oh, so, so, so sorry. If I, have you watched mm. Rambo Three? Uh, no, I have not. I think now because when you just explained that, mm. it now makes Rambo Three now makes sense because when you watch Rambo Three, because I think the Soviets are like the bad guys, and mm. Rambo, who's like this, like. Vietnam War here oh, I, I, with the, the Taliban bandits. One second, because like one thing about Rambo is that what I always thought was like the reason why I don't like Rambo. I like I watched Rambo one and two, mm. but the reason why I don't is because like there's just something about one American guy goes and single handedly fights a war uh, even with one machine gun, it, and it's just like I, I'm like, bro, it's an like, action. It, it, see, it, it, it's an action fantasy. It's not supposed to be taken serious. Like, see, Rambo one was realistic on from the two onwards. No, no, no. It's basically it was a propaganda thing. It was yeah, it yeah, was yeah. full on propaganda, and it was no, it was on a project propaganda. But sorry, continue. Yeah. So, 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 um, when when like Amer- like when America went to Afghanistan, Afghanistan didn't did it come in nine eleven. None of the people they were were affected by like the people who did it were were Saudis, one Egyptian guy, and one Lebanese guy. Like that, those were the people who committed the atrocity. But they didn't go near Saudi Arabia. They went after Iraq and Afghanistan. But they say that Afghanistan harbored bin Laden. Al Qaeda told them, told the U.S. provide us proof that you believe that bin Laden did this, and we will hand him over. Right? They ne- they never gave them any proof. They had no proof to prove that it was him that did it. Now I'm not defending them. Obviously, I'm I'm, I'm anti Taliban. I'm anti. They're, mm. they're, I feel like they bastardized the religion. I believe that they they. Uh, but 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 we have to look at how they're created. Now I want to ask you a question, H H. Mm. Let's talk about foreign intervention for a second, because I want to like I this this is a bit close home to me because like in Syria, I feel like I, I hold the West accountable for what's happening right now, because when you have um, a country that is disgruntled with its president with its leadership, and they go out and they have an issue with it and they start protesting all that stuff, um, other countries should not get involved in that. That is internal. You should allow the country to sort that stuff out within itself. That was my issue with with, with Iraq. Mm-hmm. That's that's exactly the thing. Now imagine, let's rewind back to 2016 when Donald Trump was first elected into pre- as president. You had the vast majority of Americans, like the majority, like it was it was very common. The majority, the mainstream, did not like Donald Trump. They were anti Donald Trump. They were out and they were protesting. Not my president. They did not want him. He does not represent us. All the all these movements. Now imagine. If China just decides, you know what, look at these American people. They need our help. Look how they're being oppressed. Look how the police are attacking them. We have to go mm-hmm. intervene and bring democracy to America. And instead of letting everything just play out and people grow from that experience, from that from that, from that, that experience that you have, um, mm-hmm. instead, you come and you force your morality onto them. You force your weapons. You force all this stuff and inject more, like, you, you escalate the situation to the point where now it's, it's it, you can't de-escalate because there's been death and murder and all this but, stuff. But just on that Points and I've got to mm-hmm. shout out my brother because my brother actually explained this to, to, to me during the heats of the Iraq war. Mm-hmm. Because he said that Saddam Hussein was an evil, but he was a lesser evil. See, Saddam Hussein was like a cook inside a wine bottle, mm-hmm. and inside the wine bottle is are all these factions, yep. all these several factions. And what Saddam Hussein was, he was just something that just kept everybody at, at, at bay. bay. Yep. So once you now remove that chaos all health problems because you don't understand the various dimensions of how this place operates you don't know understand the nuances and the various different because you the life is complicated the world is complicated one plus one doesn't equal two you can say oh democracy is good everyone should have a way of the democracy no it may work for you but this is a different culture different tradition different histories and also unlike america because again, I know, speaking as a Nigerian, mm. I know about different things of Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa, Fulani, and the different sects and how deep those things can be when you bring religion into it. You don't understand how serious different religious sects are and the complications mm. of that. So you now coming in and say, oh, hey, presidents, 
um, democratic elections and, and so forth. Wait a minute. The, you can't assume that way is going to work in a country that has a totally different history, different people than you do. In HH, and even if it did work, their approach, that's not what they're going, the U.S. is going in for. The U.S. is going for natural resources and Afghanistan yeah, for opiates and Iraq, it's for, it's for, for uh, oil. Like, even for, like, if you go back to Iraq in, in, in 2001, 2000, two, year 2000, you can look up the numbers yourself. The Iraqi dinar was worth seven U.S. dollars. Their economy was booming. The Iraq was, was considered a hub for, for medicine in, in the Middle East. Like, when people wanted to go study to be a doctor, it was very common that you'd go to Iraq to study because they had some of the best universities for doctors. The Iraq had the fourth largest standing army. The Iraq was self-sufficient and did not even, like, like they, they didn't do trades with the West. Like, there is in the 80s, 90s, like, Saddam was shaking hands with, with the George Bush Sr. and all that stuff. They only turned on him in the Gulf War in the 90s is when he invaded Kuwait, and that's when he affected their bottom dollar um, because Kuwait obviously is 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 uh, like it, it, it's with the U.S. Like they make money with the U.S. because of their uh, oil. Uh, so so like overall, like most of this stuff, like it's under the guise of democracy. I'm just pointing out the hypocrisy in their mm, arguments. Mm, mm. I don't believe anything they say when they're coming in to change or affect their morality. I'm just saying that this intervention is always a net negative. Like even now they're pulling out and you see all these Afghanis like, like struggling, unfortunately, I do believe in the long run, this is better for Afghanistan because that's how people grow. When you go through a problem, people grow from it. Like for example, let's talk about, let's talk about uh, the acceptance of like gay marriage and, and, and gay people or, or in the, in the current century that we're in. Um, Imagine if, like, a hundred years ago, when, when, uh, like, I'm talking about 1920, 1930, when, when America was like more oppressive towards mm. uh, homosexuals and and, and LGBT, LGBTQ. Um, imagine if somebody comes in and be like, "Well, no, well, you're treating these people badly. Now we have to like go in and we have to bring you democracy and freedom and all this stuff and start bombing them because that's how you bring democracy and freedom is just by bombing them and giving them more guns and weapons and making everybody just more barbaric by just looking seeking to kill the opposition, right? Instead, look what happened with the U.S. Just naturally over time, over exposure, they were able to cope with it and grow with it and accept mm. it, right? So with people, when, when religious extremism is the same thing because back in the U.S. and then back in the early tw- in the twenty the twentieth century. Again, there was more. It wasn't as secular as it is today. It was mm. more religious. People used to bring Christianity into everything, but slowly over time, people became more secular because they they grow from these experiences. But what did the U.S. do? They chased off the the natives of Afghanistan into mountains where they have to defend themselves. And when you come and you push people like with your morals, what happens? There's going to be pushed back, and you're going to push them so far to the extreme. Did you see the videos of those? Te- Taliban guys, when they were, went into the, the training facilities and they were like working out on, the, on those weights, mm. these people have never seen this stuff before, right? So how can you criticize them and judge them as if like they're evil? It's clear to, that they, ha- they had no proper education. It's clear that they never had any proper uh, like rights, like for example, like uh, or, or, or uh, no, but, but, no, but, but, proper see, growth. No, my thing though, right, is mm. this. I just, you want to, because, so why did you go into Afghanistan? You went to Afghanistan because you felt that this is the place in which housed the people that committed the Twin Tower disaster. That's what I... Allegedly, according to them, yeah. No, no, no. That's what we're sold on, on, on the news. So my thing is, once you go there, you have to go there with the... Because you can't... You have to go there with what's what, what, what's your intentions. Your intentions can and can't be convoluted, convoluted and coalesced with different intentions. Because my thing is that okay, we are here because we believe that this place houses so so and so. So once you get that person, boom, you have to now go and leave. But the issue, hence why it now this way now it now things now gets complicated. It's, it's so complex mm-hmm. because if there's a war, there, there's a war. But now that's a whole bunch of people came in and they come to the whole Twin Tower thing. So where are these people? Where are they located? Who are they involved with? How many of, of them are there? Because now, as you're now coming into a country, yes, you want to try and get the person that perpetrated it, but well, now that you're here, you're now pulled into guerrilla warfare. You're now pulled into doing this and, and so forth. And it now becomes, oh, wait a minute, now we're here. We now have to now change the whole dimensions of how this country op- operates. And by changing the dimensions of how it operates, there's now going to be a knock-on effect, which is what you're now having, you know? So, because I remember just even, like, over the past year saying, okay, so this is the first time, like, 
I remember they, had, they made a big deal, a massive deal that, my gosh, that Afghanistan are finally having their first ever democratic elections. This is like a big thing. I was like, oh, yeah, this is a big thing. Yeah. But is this, the, is this right for this country? Because we are just, it's just thrust upon us for those people that, people who live in the West, that, hey, elections, democratic, democratic elections, boom, boom, bow. But really, this, this is where it goes to what plus one doesn't equal to. Dictatorships, I'll say soft dictatorships for some countries work. Mm -hmm. For some countries, democracy doesn't work. And that's what some people can't, um, um, that's, that's pretty much what some people cannot accept is that democracies and elections can't work based on the dimensions of the country. So the situation that you now have with Afghanistan is you have so ruptured the dimensions of the country. And it goes back to that article that I sent you that you can give people all the money and teach people all this stuff. You have to know, do they know how to implement it? Mm. Because the biggest thing is, how did this freaking army that's been trained for so many years fall so easily? You know, even you got, even, it, it, even Biden said that Biden was like, "Oh, I didn't anticipate this to happen so quickly." Hence, why he did. Do you know what's he, now trending? But already, do you know what's now trending? If you type in now Afghan army, you know how like Google like um, anticipates the next word. Mm -hmm. you type in Afghan army, the next word is cowards. So the big thing now is, oh, Afghan army. These guys are a bunch of cowards. And, that, and I'm that's, that's unfair. That's unfair. See, see, this is this is this is just evil on their part. Is that they're trying to frame them as the villains? Just, here's the problem: is that look, first of all, you're getting involved in a land war in Asia, right? Asia is one of the oldest continents and most diverse continents on the planet, right? Like, especially when you're talking about like like the different factions and the groups and the religions and all that stuff inside in in, in Afghanistan. Like I was just mentioning, like Afghanistan is located next to Pakistan, South mm -hmm. Russia. Like you have like like you have the whole Muslim Middle Eastern aspect of, from the, coming to the west of them. They were there's so many different factions and groups and histories and in, in, in old conflicts there where people are diverse, right? So just going in and supporting any group never really helps. You really it's you got to be careful. Now. What's 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 the the problem with what the U.S. did? You get involved in a land war. Now all these Al Qaeda, like the Taliban, they'll just go hide out in the mountains. The, the guerrilla warfare is their thing. They'll go out, they'll do their operation, and then they'll go hide in the mountains. What did the U.S. help Afghanistan with? Because once they pulled out originally, they pulled out all their soldiers. They said the Afghan army is going to do the fighting, and we'll just provide you with air force support mm. and logistics, right? So they started fighting wars the way the West fights wars. With just drones and logistics and from 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 afar, and, so the Afghan and, and, and do you know whether these guys know how to fight the way that you know how to fight? Ex now here's the thing, HH. Now with with what they did is now the Afghan army was going based off of lo like logistics that the U.S. Army is feeding them, intel that the U.S. Army is feeding them, and from the Air Force and like they were going and operating off of that. Now overnight. This army, who's not not used to being on the ground in the mountain, because they don't scope like that. They don't they don't scope like that. They they use the 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 army. They, they usually go from okay, here's where we have to go. They go from point A to point B, complete the mission, come back. Right now, they lose all that support. They lose the air force support. They lose the logistics. They lose like two big factions like, or big 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 A that they used to have in in, in, the, in their fight against the Taliban. Overnight, they just lose all of that. The Taliban lose nothing. Right, the Taliban are used to this. If anything, they 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 the opposition just got significantly weaker, mm. and they could go in, right? And and that that's therein lies the problem is the U.S. didn't go in and train them and, and make themselves sufficient. No, no, wait, wait, no, wait, 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 wait hold up, hold up. Mm. Let I've got to push push back. Mm. Ninety billion, that you say is is more. Where the mm. hell did that ninety billion come from? Because no, no, because no, see, see, right. Look at the guys that we're looking at here. These mm. are just regular guys. I don't see um I don't see AK 47s So my thing I mean there's one the guy's holding one right there to the right of the guy that's yeah, yeah. wait, is that a rocket launcher? I the no, guy to, 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 to yeah, the on the left, left, yeah. On the left, that's a rocket launcher, and then on the right, that's an uh, AK 47 Jesus Christ. You see, my thing is how is that you have the support of America, the greatest military force that this planet has ever seen. Who have? Because you read. Now I want to know. 
let's let's get real. This is this, this, this called real conversations. Let's get mm. real. Mm. I'm just going to throw stuff out there. Did America really want the Afghan army to be in the best possible position to um, fend for themselves and fight on their feet? Because see, I draw parallels with with Israel. Uh, did America give the Afghan army the same kind of support that they've given Israel? Because my thing is, I cannot understand how you spent over ninety billion. You have given them all the reconnaissance and so forth, and the response is, well, they don't know how to use your weapons. Well, they don't know how to use your methods and so forth. You've been here for like over a decade. You've been here for well over it. So you've seen in over a decade. Okay, let's say I'm learning a new language or so forth. It's taking me a while. Let's say I'm even learning what quantum physics. It's going to take me a while. Red. If I'm learning quantum physics every day for five, six, seven years, by the sixth, seventh year, I'll, 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 I can say what's up to Einstein. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can say what's up to Einstein if I've been learning it every day for seven, eight years. But so my thing is that during all this time, all this freaking time, the moments you leave, these guys fall within seconds. Yeah, within no, seconds. It, 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 it's because, like, again, they, because they weren't okay. Look, teaching somebody how to shoot a gun doesn't mean he's ready for war. Teaching somebody how, how how to fight doesn't mean he's ready for war. Like, it's just, there's a lot of factors that come into it. Like, again, like I said... What's the again, difference between them and the Israelis? Well, the, the th difference is, is, like, look, when it comes to when it comes to Israel, that's more of an occupation. Like, they're, they're more disputing over territories that's no, no, inhabited. No, 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 no. Said, what's, what's the difference between the tutorship mm -hmm. that the Americans have given Israel and the tutorship that they've because given they, the Afghans? They, they, they didn't give tutorship. Like, it's like w w America aids Israel in building Israel. America like aids Israel in 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 like in, into going in and they back them into taking over homes and, and land and, and like like slowly and they help them develop an army in their own standing army in their own like air force in their own and they made Israel the fourth biggest army on the planet. Like America did that. With Afghanistan, they didn't do that. Afghanistan, first of all, they 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 just they, they were just present there. They were just taking over. Like they, they were, there's pictures of American troops standing outside guarding opiate uh, opiate fields. Like America didn't do for Afghanistan what it did for Israel. And first of all, and aside from that, America has been aiding Israel for the better part of like for almost a hundred years at this point. They've been sending them aid every single year, and they continue to send them aid every single year. They they don't exist within Israel. And that they, they just keep sending them money, they keep sending them weapons, they send them, they send them the Iron Dome protection, they sent them so much technology. They didn't do the same for Afghanistan. Like what like you like again and also it's, don't forget like the difference between Israel and in 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 in, in uh, Afghanistan is what Israel is doing is they're occupying cities and in, in towns where they go in and they take them over like that, right? Whereas in Afghanistan, you're talking about mountains, you're talking about a region where it's 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 not like it's not very easy land to really take over. These people just retreated to the mountains. That's why they're very hard to like to destroy. America, the only the only they, they were they they weren't giving them any troop support or any like heavy military support in, in that aspect. They were just giving them like logistics and like air force and of, of course they're like they had the training facilities and the weapons and all that stuff. But once you take that stuff away from them, these troops that are used to fighting a certain type of warfare now lose their biggest asset, right? And and now Taliban can just go if they go and take in a military base, all no, the weapons red, that America red, left red, behind. Red, is red, red, hold hold on, red, hold on. Mm -hmm. This Afghan army, they knew because again, look, I'm not judging anyone and everything. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just asking questions here because yeah, this is on. an open dialogue. They knew that America, they're not going to be here for forever. Mm -hmm. They knew that eventually. They're going to have to leave. So you must have that knowledge. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. This wasn't a case where, hey, we're at, boom, well, we're gone. It's like, okay, we are going in five months now. Okay? Five months. Okay? Five months. Okay? Remember? Five yeah. months. We're not, we're not leaving tomorrow. Five months. Okay? Four months. Okay? Three. So you know that, okay, what's we still have here, but... These guys are eventually going to leave. So let's get on our minds that by after five months, we're going to have to now stand on our feet. But what I've not been reading and seeing is there are guys that were like, no, no matter what, we'll never be able to stand on our feet. <laughs> the guys who were, were already defecting to the Taliban and so forth um, before the Amer Americans withdrew the army. So it wasn't also as if we're that. If you guys aren't here, we're gonna fold. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna give in. 
Like, so, uh, so, so, so my thing, Reddit, is that look, we can talk about how America, UK, being messed everything up is. How do you now blame again? I'm not throwing questions at there. How do you now blame America? Okay, no, what could America now do if it's a case of where no matter what we do, no matter how much we train and and, and so forth, when we leave, do not this is gonna happen. Don't intervene. That's the key. Like that's what I'm saying. Is, like, oh, just okay, don't intervene. Okay. Because like well, in Vietnam, no, 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 the no, same no, thing. But, but Red, they've already intervened. So we're already here now. It's already happened. You let it so, play out. You let it play out. You just let you let the people sort it amongst themselves. Even if the Afghan army falls, that means that army was not strong enough and it did not have the guard, it did not garner the support. And it's unfortunate, but you just let everything play out on its own. Like the, the US did the same thing in Vietnam. They go in, they'll support a certain faction. Then once they're done, they got what they wanted. They'll leave, they'll leave, and then that faction falls immediately because that faction does not have the people on its side. The, the people, the, the the men, the the the, the women, the, the, the support is not on their side. That's why that faction falls. Out. It's, that's why it's weak. You sort of have to let things HH always play out on their own. There's always going to be civil war. There's going to be war. There's going to be these kind of issues. But like when you want to go, you go in. If, if you want to aid, you aid in politically, right? By by through speech. You don't go in and give more weapons because you know what the U.S. just did right now. You know what the U.S. just did there right now. It just gave the the, the, the Taliban an arsenal. They gave them weapons. They gave them military bases. They gave them equipment. That's all they did. All the, the cars, the planes that the U.S. left behind. Who oh, do you think is going to take all that stuff over? Oh now the Taliban is stronger than it was 20 years ago. Had they just left it 20 years ago, Afghanistan probably could have been able to sort it all out by itself just through through time. And wait, through wait, just wait, like, wait. Oh, you know, so, right? oh, so this all the stuff you've given the Afghan army it's now since Taliban. they've now folded since the Taliban. Oh, and now guess God. what? It's, it's, now the Taliban. Now the Taliban are, are stronger before the U.S. involved. Like the U.S. involved to beat these guys, they made them like like they made them stronger because look, we know this generation after generation, they're always more liberal than their parents, right? Like every everybody that when you're born, like your parents have a certain amount of way way of thinking. You're always like, yeah, I agree with my parents to an extent at the core, but I do believe that they're a bit hard like that, and we grow, right? So, well, who are we to say that twenty years ago? Let's say, for example, had let's say the Taliban took over in the 1990s and they ran Afghanistan, and then slowly their kids grew up and they were a bit more liberal, and then their other kids became a little bit more liberal, and then over time, like they sort of phase out that way of thinking and they grow from it. You know what I mean? They, 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 as a civilization, they grow. They, they realize that okay, this is not good for us. We, they start developing more. They start getting better and better, and that that tends to happen. That's why you see a lot of countries, mostly nowadays around the world, they're more secular, like especially ones that didn't that weren't war torn. If a country is war torn, then yes, they're going to be more conservative because they're just trying to survive. So they tend to stick together, and they, 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 they these because their lives are so cheap and easily like taken away. Um, they, they, they have to believe in a higher power. That, that's going to come and sa save them. That's going to bring them justice, right? So this is what what's happening is when you come and interfere, you bring imbalance to the situation. You don't solve it. You don't know what the actual just is. You're just believing that okay, we're going to stand with this faction automatically because they're against this faction. But that faction that you're standing with is not even strong. It doesn't have no proper foundation. There's no history behind it. There's no core people. There's no nothing that's galvanizing them together. You're you're intervening in a problem, trying to solve it in a way that would like you're you're giving them an answer that doesn't fit the question right people have to grow on their own that's why western intervention in these smaller nations is never good it always hurts them all they did all the u.s did in the past 20 years aside from kill their own kids waste their own tax dollars and put a lot of afghani lives at risk and, and, and put afghanistan through it like a, put the afghani people through a huge diaspora worldwide um is just hinder their progress for 20 years no, because see, my thing is that they actually set them back. Yeah, they yeah, set them back now. No, because has America improved any of these countries that they've come to occupy? No. The only country that's improved is Israel. And in that scenario, they let Israel do their own thing. They just send them financial support and they back them politically. Which is exactly what I'm saying. If you want to help a nation, you don't want to help a nation by injecting it with more weapons and, and pushing for more fighting. You help a nation by providing it with financial aid to really build infrastructure and by politically supporting it in, in, in the political world and, and, to get, to get it, trade, to get to, to, to make the country sell, the economy up and running. I think because the thing, the thing that America has to realize is, again, you should have sort of realized this through Vietnam. So what you have to realize is... Maybe it's a sense of arrogance and so forth. Is 
you cannot enforce your own values and way of life in a different country. Now, bad is bad. Evil is evil. So let's say there's somebody that is doing horror, horrible, horrendous atrocities and a guy, let's say you can feel that a Hitler is arising. Oh, you have to act because mm-hmm. this, this guy um, poses either a potential threat to the world or again, what happened with um, in uh, what's it called Bosnia with the genocide there or yep. in R- Rwanda. Yep. Yep. No, yep. You, you see, this is just a, this is a human thing. We're now going to comment. Yep. And that but I if, agree with. But if a country, yeah, they're having issues, but the con- but the issues are internal. They're internal. And it isn't a global human rights casualty, that's, which is pretty much what like, Idi Amin did in U- Uganda and so forth. Because, again, that's where the UN steps in. That's, the UN steps in with regards to, no, this is now um, a human rights violation on a large scale. We have mm. to step in as the international police protecting human rights. But when something is internal, that does that can't involve you because you're just involving yourself into something that is complex, complicated, and is to do with that tradition. Because in America, they totally disregard the various religious nuances, the various tra- traditional nuances, and so forth existing. Because they're like, no, it's America, liberation, blah, 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 Democrats, boom, here we go, elections. Because see, Red, do you know who this is? Uh no, I'm not aware. She is the first um I've got I'm not sure. I think her name is Zarifa Gafara. She is the first female mayor of Afghanistan. Mm. And already so says she says that she fears for her life. She says that she is just waiting for the Taliban to come and kill her. And she fears for her life. You know, um, because again. The belief is Sharia law is not going to be installed, blah, 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 blah. Although the, the Taliban said, oh, we're going to protect women's rights and so forth. But she said that she, she fears for her life. My thing is, again, we hope that she's good. But if anything happens to her, America is to blame. America is to blame. Because you installed a scenario where she could be male as a female. And obviously, she assumed that, aha, we now, this is a whole new Afghanistan that can exist where someone like me, a woman, can be the mayor. But now that America's left and the army has folded and the Taliban are now going to come in and now put in their own structure, because I think I saw an image of where they're basically tearing down um, this um, posters of women dressed like in... Um, you know, revealing clothes and, and, and so forth, you know. Yep. So she's like, you know, so if something happens to her, that's on America. Because mm-hmm. it's just you, because remember, if you didn't come in, I could never be mayor. Now you can say what you want about that and, and so forth, but I could I'll, I'll, I could never be, be mayor, but I can still live my life whoever I am. But you came in because you you sold me a lie. And the lie is, this is now going to be how Afghanistan will operate ad infinitum mm-hmm. of a place yeah. that is a, 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 a democracy. Yeah, democracy, elected officials where a woman can be mayor. Now the, that you've left and so forth, and the Taliban have come and are going to now install, no, 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 no. Whatever you had before, this ain't it. She now says, bro, because maybe I am now breaking some kind of strict laws that the Taliban have. And I may now have to face these these consequences because you guys have left, withdrawn. I've not, I'm not le- left us with the proper foundation. So now people are like, Who do, you, do you blame the Afghan army for sort of folding? Or do you blame the American army for not properly giving the Afghan army the proper tools which to fend for themselves independently? Mm. Well, see, it's just like one thing, just for clarity, uh, I don't want to uh, absolve the Taliban from their disgusting acts. And they're mm. discussing actions like they are scum of the earth. They are. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I don't agree with their politics at all. And like the fact that the, their treatment of women and how they how they uh, bastardize the religion of Islam. And because they, they, they don't get it wrong, don't get me wrong. It's just like they, they, that that like their version of Sharia law is not Sharia law. They they they've done something that's like suitable for them. It's uh, mm. very perverted. Uh, and uh, I don't I don't agree with them at all. Um, but what you're saying is absolutely spot on, HH, where you have to hold the U.S. accountable because they put they set these people up for failure. That's what they did. They set these people up for failure. They they didn't 
like they didn't properly set up a foundation for this democracy to continue. Mm. They didn't. They they weren't really investing. You could tell that this is a half-assed job. This is a this is a job where the, the U.S. had a ulterior motives, which they fulfilled, and they were doing this to to really uh, justify the spending of the American tax dollars, American uh, American tax dollar payer, uh, the taxpayer. Uh, they're justifying like, oh look, look, we're doing this because we're helping. We need to help these less fortunate people in Afghanistan. Look how they're impressing women. Look at, the, the, by the way, to justify the entry into Afghanistan back 20 years ago, I forgot the name of this monster. Uh, there was this one uh, American congresswoman. Um, she dressed up in the full niqab and went to Congress and she was talking. And like, let me actually pull up your, her name so you could actually pull, uh, mm. you could put her picture up. She dressed up in a full niqab and did this whole guilt trip thing about like women back home. They, they, they like in, in, in Afghanistan are forced to do this. This is oppression. We have to go in and help these women and yada, yada, yada. Mm. Meanwhile, like, Obviously, that's not why they went in. Obviously. The reason why they went in is to... One second. I can't, fi- I can't find it right now. But the reason yeah. why they went in is obviously, like I said, for, alter- for ulterior motives. But mm-hmm. they use this to justify it to the American taxpayer. Because the American taxpayer is going to be like, well, why are we going to these countries? Where are we helping them? Why can't they solve their own problems? Because that's what you should do. Let people solve their own problems. Because look at this, HH. Look at, the, look, at the, look, at the, look at that. Look at that picture. Look at that picture. Like this is this is this is like like red. I'm telling you, man. You see, this picture was was you know what's horrified me? Because see, I'm I'm not going to play the the video because it's it's it's, it's messed up. There's there's a video of you see people actually dropping falling from the plane. Yeah, yeah. No, like because HH again. It's like it's like if if you had a if you had a school bully, and instead of some you actually learning how to cope with that school bully which people tend to do over time whether they stand up to him whether they befriend him whether they find any any type of defensive means like you know what i mean people actually adapt right it's like i just come and i'm like you know what i'll take care of your bully and every day i beat up that bully for you every single day in your name i beat up that bully and then Mm -hmm. one day i'm like well i have hope i gotta go to another school good luck and i just leave you now that bully has all that pent up aggression i didn't teach you how to fight I didn't fix the problem politically by like telling telling the boy, mm. hey, be friends, he's cool, yada yada. All I did was just beat him up for you. Yeah. Right? What is that gonna make the bully do once as soon as I leave? Do you know the perfect um analogy is um if you give a man a fish, he can feed himself for like a day. I, I was gonna Te- say that. Te- yeah, yeah, teach a man how to yeah. fish. He yeah, can yeah, feed himself for a lifetime. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And that's and that's what America did not teach them how to fish. America, like I said, they went in with their invested interest. They got but, what but, they but, wanted but, to get. But, but the issue is, we were sold that they did teach teach them, but obviously you didn't properly teach them because if you, you see, see that's a cool analogy. But if we want to now, because this is it's a bit more complicated because hmm. you could argue that we did teach them, but as you just said that. You can show a man how to shoot and, and and so forth, but do you? But you can't create the scenario of war. It's like penalties in football. Oh my gosh, I can easily take this this penalty with my eyes closed in training. World Cup final, all pressure. the pressure. You played 120 minutes. Oh, now it's very different. Okay. So you're now having to hold the, the the gun, and you don't have that psych psychological cushion that hey man, we have the Americans with us and so forth, and these guys are experts. As oh, this is suddenly something. Difference now. So, for Here. America, how do you go around that? Or we can teach them and give them everything, but how do we teach them to fend for themselves once so, we're gone? So, it's here's the thing. I'm going to read this from the Bulwark article that you sent me, right? Mm-hmm. And to, and, uh, but in that 2014 handoff is an important part of an explanation of the, for the Afghan army's 2021 defeat. The deal put in place at the time was the Afghans would do the fighting and, and the dying, and the United States would provide logistical and air support, right? So the mm-hmm. United States would give them the intel needed and the air support needed, like the view of where to target, and the Afghan warriors would, would respond to that, right? So that's how mm-hmm. they were taught to fight. This is, how, this is vital to the way that they, they fight. War is not just fighting on the battlefield. Logistics are vitally important. More to the more to the point, Americans train the Afghans to fight as we do, not like the Afghans used to. The Afghans used to. What I mean by that is, you're on a ground war in Asia. You have mountains. You have different regions. People hide. You know what I mean? It's not just cut through. You're not just in an open battlefield. 
this is this is everything has to be precise and meticulous and, and everything and, and, and you have to know the region like the back of your hand and a lot of these mm -hmm. afghan warriors that are in the army are just dudes that are in their 18 19 years old they don't know the land they live they were raised in in these like little city compounds that the u.s is protecting and and, and they're, they're taught to like how to shoot a gun and that's it they're not really raised like the taliban are hard fought like the, the, these guys have been like like through hell, like these battle, guys know the battle region. tested, battle tested, battle tested. They're, they've been they've been fighting with one of the, the strongest army the world has ever known for the past twenty years. They know the region like the back of their hand. Like the, the, you see the imbalance between that between the the, the two. Like the, the well, Taliban no. also, the Taliban also. Like you remember, you know that 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 what's it called uh, in in in, in three hundred? Hmm. What's your profession? I'm a carpenter, sir. Your profession? A cook. Spartans. What is your profession? Oh, like they're, they're ready to. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. That's what the Taliban is. They're, they're all warriors. Like these guys are ready to die. But I'm just no, going to no, continue no. this real quick. Okay. More, uh, logistics are vitally important. More to the point, Americans train the Afghans to fight as we do, not like the Afghans used to. So they become reliant on our methods, tactics, and equipment, mm. including air support and complex system of military units that requires an exhaustive command and communications network. While we may have good intentions and good reasons for making the Afghans reliant on these tools and techniques, we never taught the Afghans how to do them on their own. We did them for the Afghans ourselves. The U.S. never built an Afghan air military, uh, sorry, air force. They never gave the Afghans proper computers and systems for them to be able to find out these logistics. They provided the intel for them and told them to fight. So even though they say that we trained them and we gave them all these weapons, it's disingenuous because you didn't give them you didn't give them proper training on how to use it, how to execute these problems. It's sort of, it's sort of like giving you give somebody like a Bugatti, you don't give them the proper gas and fuel needed to really run that Bugatti, right? You gave them a supercar, you gave them these weapons, but you need special fuel. You need wait, special, wait, 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 like, wait, 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 wait. Can you can you just because mm -hmm. I think you may have just cut out a, a little bit. Can you just say that right. bit a, a, again? Like they like just said. About uh, uh I'm, do you want me to read it like over? Like like uh, while we may have uh, have good in, uh, have had good intentions and mm. good reasons for making the Afghans reliant on these tools and techniques, we never taught the Afghans how to do them on their own. We did them for the Afghans ourselves. They never gave them a air su a air support like an air force or helped them build an air force or establish an air force. They never gave them a communications network or how to like do their own units and measurements. And all. They didn't do that. They did it for Israel. <laughs> When Israel, when they help Israel, they, they helped Israel establish an air force. They helped Israel get like a, the Iron Dome. They helped Israel do a, a ton of like, there's so many uh, like aspects in which they helped them militarily, socially, politically, but they didn't do the same for Afghanistan because AGH, they never cared. Again, I'm not, I don't want to get into conspiracy theory territory, uh, mm. but it's commonly known that Afghan is one of the most richest country in opiates. It's commonly known. Like, and, and it, who's the biggest country that consumes opiates in the world? The U.S. It's if not if it's not first, it's a second. I think it's second only to China or first above China. Mm -hmm. And China has one point something billion people. Like it, 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 there's pictures of U.S. soldiers sitting with guns in front of opiate farms. Why? If you're there to bring democracy and train the people and help them out, or and, and get the Taliban, why is an opiate field uh, of your concern? What 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 business do you have there? Oh, no, oh, no, right. oh, no. They're, they're always ulterior motives, man. They're always, yeah, they're always, always and, ulterior motives. And, and that's the thing that messes me up the most, H is people will go like, well, like, like, what do you mean that U.S. is that evil? Like, I'm like, look, they, they, their own people are struggling on their own land. Like, the American, the American people don't even have health care. The American people don't even, because they're, 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 they're literally convinced and, and, and told that this stuff is expensive and, and, and you're, it's socialism and, and you're, you're lazy and greedy. For asking for basic human rights, right? That's, that's what they're told. Meanwhile, though, they have no problem spending billions and billions and billions overseas to to help a select few with their invested interests or in the, in that region. They, they, that's and they, they justify it by saying like making them feel good, like oh no, we're the good guy. We're there because we're trying to bring democracy. We're trying to help them, right? Like look, these poor people. Look at them. Look at they need our help. They, 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 like they do all this stuff to justify like uh, their actions, but in reality, it's all about money. We can't. They don't blame the Afghans. The Afghans were set up for failure. The Afghan army was set up for failure. They never had the the, the facilities to really fight with them. They never had the, the 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 structure to really fight these people. Now, granted, can, you want to say that okay, they're they're cowards. They they they, they surrendered. Okay, I'd like to see if you would put your life on the line. I'd like oh, to no. see who, 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 who's willing to die, who's willing to just die. They're not dying for their country because their country is already taken over by the U.S., mm. right? So the, the people who, like, the, the, the Taliban, they're natives. <laughs> like, So 
They're, they're the natives there. They're, they're the people of that land. So, so, so my thing now is, just to close this up before our next thing is, what happens now? Like, what's the future? What's the fallout? Because do you have a situation? Because it's, because you made, you made the, see, that's the scary point you made. Scary point to me, which I didn't even clue that in was like the all the weapons you've given this army now they're folded, they're not folded into the Taliban's hands. So you've now made these guys stronger, way stronger, and better. So you've now made better fighters who are able to be very effective with lesser wear weapons now, even stronger now that they have whether you're giving them tanks, rocket launch, launch launchers, and different um advanced pieces of we weaponry now. So the situation is this this could now be a seriously dangerous knock-on effect. And again, it, it goes back to we always have to go to okay, this is this, this how do we get here? How do we get here? You have to always go to the prime mover. And the prime mover was you entering into Afghanistan. And that's why I started with 2001, September 11th. Because that's you you went in there because aha, we believe, and also everybody has the right to gain vengeance and revenge, you know. But my thing is that by getting vengeance and revenge, you could have now have affected people that had nothing whatsoever to do with what happened, the Twin Tower disaster. Like that lady that we just put up there, the first female mayor, she had nothing to do with what happened nope. on September 11th. Now, but now she, if something happens to her, that's on you. That's on you. Like it's, it's on you. You could say, oh, no, but your presence there and what she did. It's on you, so you are directly to blame. And all those guys that were chasing the military plane, you sold them something. You sold them that this is a whole new country that has changed, and now that you have now gone and everything, boom. But if you're America, you're like, well, you know, this is <laughs> because we can't we can't leave our troops here for forever. They've got to come, come, come home. They're not they're not Afghans. They've got to come home. And America's point is okay. We we, we give it the best possible training, but at the same time, it's like, <laughs> Did you? Did you give them the right training? And whether you felt you gave them the right training or so forth, it goes to the point that don't go into another man's house and totally readdress things. No, I like my couch here. I like my TV here. Well, it's we have scientific proof that you put in your TV and your couch here. I don't care. That's you. Me, for how I know, I like it here. This is how I, I, this, this, this is how I, I want things to operate so you can't enforce it on me. So... We just have to just wait and seek, man. So, um, yep. I will say this to surround it off, HH, mm. just before we move on to the next topic is that, man, just let countries sort out for themselves. I'll give this this is my favorite analogy ever. You know, the Chinese finger traps mm. where the more you pull, right? The more you pull, the tighter it gets. Mm. The more you force it, the tighter it gets. Mm. How do you solve it? Just bring your finger together, stop pushing, mm. relax, let loose, let. Afghanistan go through its own progress. Let Afghanistan let the Taliban go into power. Fine. You're gonna have to negotiate with other countries. In the end, if the regime fails, the regime fails, and then naturally a, a, a better regime will come out from the ashes, right? Like hmm. this is this is this is how countries have been. Democracy wasn't given to the U.S. Democracy wasn't given to the France or Europe or any of these countries. Over centuries, over time, they built these systems themselves. They established them. But we have to allow these nations to actually build themselves up. You have to allow these nations how to build the infrastructure. Because you saw in the war, prime example, they came in, they were giving them first world country, top of the line, air force support and logistics and stats and all that stuff. Take it away overnight, it crumbles. Because it was the, the foundation wasn't there. You have to let countries build up that foundation. right, And then that way they could succeed. So obviously, I'm not saying this to justify. Like I said, we don't want to justify the Taliban or make them seem like they're absolved from any criticism or anything mm -hmm. like that. We are criti We are simply the, the 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 angle that me and Have Hope are going at is simply that American intervention did nothing to help. It worsened the situation, and we yeah. have to hold them accountable because they are the biggest issue. They're the ones that escalated to this point, and they're the ones that made us reach this point. For all we know, for like, you, how they just left. You, you made things worse. You made things worse. You made, like, right, you made things worse. Like even even uh, like ISIS, ISIS, the creation of it. Let me tell you something, Church. Had Iraq been stable, there would be no extremist group like ISIS in the region, because there is a sovereign nation with an army and military and police force that will stop any criminals like that 
from being there. But when you create a central country that, that like 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 uh, Iraq, right, that, that, that borders multiple Arab countries and per uh, Iran and, and, and like the Gulf and all this stuff, when you just make it a war zone. It, it it's chaos. This is where the issue arises. Everybody, and I mean everybody, is entitled for vengeance, mm. and everybody is entitled to have a revenge. So, based off what happened in Twitter, of course, America is entitled to seek vengeance, hundred percent. But you have to seek vengeance the right way. And the the funny thing about revenge and vengeance is you're very red blooded and hot blooded, you know. But see, I use example of um, kill. Have you seen, have you watched Kill Bill? Mm. The film? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, like the bride, she was angry because she would have felt she was angry, but she was like, "Okay, focus. I have to be very careful in how I knock out these people that screwed me over." So yes, I want revenge and vengeance, and revenge and vengeance makes my um, blood boil. But I've got to be professional about it because if I just go haywire and crazy. I could worsen things. I don't want to worsen things. I just want to just pinpoint and quickly direct the people who perpetrated this against me. But what America has done is, you're like, boom, let's go. I've got to But what you've now done is you've actually made the situation worse. And you've actually made things worse. And you've actually maybe created a scenario where more of these attacks can actually potentially happen. So look, let's 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 let's, 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 let's move to the next one, man. So are you ready to get on a touchy sort of subject? Go ahead, let's do it. <laughs> we have we have about half an hour left. Let's get into it, AJ. Half an hour, half an hour. Let's do it. Um oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me let me bring this up, man, because it's very important that I bring up the image. Mm -hmm. Um so friends, countrymen, and gentlemen. Robin. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, oh man, continue, continue, go ahead. So, so, Robin, guys, you know who, so Robin, he's, he literally is the, basically, Robin was like the original Griezmann. He was the original side, side chick. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he was the original side chick to, to Batman. So, what's it called? Pow, kapow, boom, slack, boom. That was Robin. So, apparently, sometimes come out where they've now made Robin bisexual. Yep. And, you see, this is wrong. I'm I'm going to come out and say that this is wrong. I will reiterate myself that I don't care whether you're gay, lesbian, bi, queer, q, qua, qui, cla, cli. As long as you're not harming anybody and you're not enforcing your thing on anybody, I'm cool. Those are two things. As long as you're not harming anyone and you're not enforcing your way onto anyone, I'm cool. Why does Robin have to be bisexual? For what reason? Like, like, what does that do? Because you see, you have to keep this in mind. And this is this, this is why I have issues with certain groups doing this kind of stuff. Because you feel that, okay, the in your mind, the best way for people to be accepting of our way of life is let's take something really popular that has um great ex a great reach and exposure mm -hmm. and let's now try and make that thing or something gay because you see um i'll probably bring this up afterwards but so robin my gosh everyone knows robin you see they could never try this with Bat batman like people were like that and that but robin is associated with with batman so he feeds off of batman's pop up one of the most popular mm -hmm. fictional characters of all time so by you now making robin bisexual it's now um, gets into people's consciousness and people now have to have a, a dialogue. But the thing, though, is does this method actually make people more tolerant or will this actually make people push back even more? Mm. Because my, the, the only question I ask is why? So, why, why are you going in so comic books kids read this comic book. like why are you not going to so that's, that's establish point. comic book ca characters that's that's the point ATH. like here's the thing is like for clarity just to uh, add some context uh there's different ver versions of uh of, of robins right so you have like obviously the original robin which is dick grace and that's the one that you see in teen titans the one that ends up with like starfire like the one that ends up as nightwing then you have jason todd 
that said Robin from Under the Red Hood, the Robin that was like killed by the Joker or quote unquote killed by the Joker. Uh, he was beaten to like he was beaten to a pulp, and Batman thought he was dead. And he came back as like an Edge Lord, mm. uh, like Punisher esque, uh, like superhero. Uh, and then you have uh, this uh, Robin, uh, which is Tim Drake. Mm. Uh, now Tim Drake, out of all the Robins, uh, he was always uh, like even before all this, he was considered to be the weakest Robin. Like he he didn't have the fighting <laughs> skills of Batman or any of the. Wait, so, 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 sorry, Red Rose. Sorry, side note. You know, Robin is trash, by the way. Yeah, yeah he's, he, trash, no, trash, like trash. The, the creation of Robin was just so uh, little boys had uh, an outlet, somebody to like, because you you know you look up to Batman, right, and you want to be with Batman. So they created Robin as a way for people to insert themselves into him, a little kid. Uh, that's why sidekicks came became into popularity. It was for that specific reason. So, but Robin wasn't really a serious character. He was just a vessel for the reader to to really be with Batman, essentially, or or, or with like a. Every every superhero had about like uh, Captain America had Bucky. Um, mm. What's it called? Uh, Superman had uh, another, uh, Superman. Even had, there was a there was an era of comic books where every hero had a sidekick for that specific reason because mm. it brought up sales because kids liked seeing another kid fighting crime. Right? Well, I mean, so, maybe you could, you could say Jimmy Olsen for Superman. Maybe, maybe kind of, the, yeah. Superman guys, sort of, but he didn't really have a sidekick. No, no. Like I'm pretty sure if they go back and like in, in, in his hundred year history, there's gonna be like I think it was like in the 50s and 60s where they really tried to push that sidekick era. Mm. But uh, so Tim Drake, um, he was he was he was con- always largely considered the 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 smart one. Like he was the one that bat- like he matched Batman's he had Batman's wits, but he never really had the brawn. And mm. even like in, in in modern narrations of comics, he'd always be the one that's like uh, behind. So uh, in, in other words. He was the gayest Robin. He really was. And like they just now made it like overt. They did make it overt. Like in all honesty, um, I'll be honest with you, HH, like I've been, uh, I, there's there's these cool YouTube channels where like they always have like these cha- challenges where like, oh, like Gen X versus Gen Z or like 10 high schoolers uh, decide who wins a thousand dollars. And like, it's just like these random challenge YouTube channels. They're all located in LA and they have like these mm-hmm. uber liberal uh, kids that go on there. And like, honestly, honestly, when you look at this new generation that's coming up, to them, like they identify with this. They 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 do. Like the comic industry, I don't feel like they're pushing it onto kids, but more mm. they're mirroring what they're seeing around them. And I'm not saying, of course, like this doesn't go across the world because for the ma- vast majority of the world, it's more more conservative. But in the Western world, especially more developed regions, like when you talk about San Francisco mm. and New York and California and like all these areas, these new kids, like they're very much. No, no, but, 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 but my thing right is that not. But you have to see, you have to accept what something is. You can't just try and construct what you think something should be. You have to accept by what it is. Robin is a global character mm-hmm. that isn't confined confined to San Francisco or, or LA. He is mm-hmm. known all around the world. Yep. He's known all, all around the world. And my thing about it is that I couldn't give a damn about how Robin was presented or he was this, he was gay, that, and so forth. But you coming out and making him bisexual, I now have a whole bisexual thing. You see, what if, because, you know, like um, people say, oh my gosh, you know, video games are harming our, our kids and, and so forth. No. When you look at GTA, it clearly says rated 18. So mm. if your kid buys that GTA thing, that's on you, the freaking parent. But it doesn't say rated 18 on this on this comment that Robin is bisexual. So what if a five-year-old who is Batman obsessed picks mm. up the, this, this, this comic book, sees that, oh, Robin uh, has a relationship with an, another guy, so forth, and this five-year-old sees his male friend and starts to kiss him. And I yeah, go, but, 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 oh, but see, well, but, I, I saw but just, that's what they're, that's literally precisely what they're trying to do. Like they they are oh, purposely. So, oh, they're trying to confuse kids. Then they're, they're trying, trying to normalize. Kids they're trying to normalize bisexuality. They're trying to normalize homosexuality. They they it, again like I don't like the thing is like I, I I kind of like sort of have become almost numb to it to this point because like it's in every media like it's just, you can go turn on any Netflix show. No, no, wait, 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 but ready, see. You're a guy that you say you're you're you're, you're hoping you're gonna get married soon with mm. kids and everything. So you can be numb to it now with without mm. any kids. But let's just say you had kids. Let's say this is like mm. five, six days in advance. And you have like a three, four year old kid. Mm. Will your attitude still be the same? Yeah, no, I'll, I'll be I'll, like I. The thing is, HH is like as long as the parents are present in the kid's life, the kid won't be susceptible to brainwashing. If you give somebody, you know, a man who who stands for nothing falls for anything, mm. right? If you give if you give anybody proper guidance and proper stuff 
they will follow in your footsteps once you give them like if you, once you when you're, once you're present. It, the people who are susceptible to this are people with identity crises, people who, who actually like people who fall for not just I'm not talking about just like this like the bisexuality thing. I'm talking about like any kind of brainwashing in social media or or in media consumption. Like all that stuff falls from from, from people that really like they're just trying to find something that they could belong to. I, I I'll put, I'll be honest with you. I personally personally like. I don't care, like especially for Robin and 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 all that stuff. Because like, first of all, Robin's one of the wackest characters in in, in, in comic book history. Like, we know the stage. Like, we, like, come on, like he's literally named after a bird. Like his name after his name is Robin, a bird. Like, come on, like like. Not to mention, it was very commonly known that like Batman and Robin were were, were gay. Like 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 not commonly known, but like like commonly discussed. Like, we, there's that comic book where they were literally sleeping in the same bed, and this is like back in the 1940s, right? Like. So, like, I'm not going to get offended over this stuff. Like, God, you know what? Like, if he wants to do that, then God bless him. Like, and, like, I'm not going to lie. HH, let's use, I, I, I'm going to use logic right here, right? If you're telling me that a kid could be influenced by seeing a man and a man being to get reading about a comic where a man decides to go out with a man, then how come kids aren't influenced when they see a man and a woman? Things that pervert the child's mind, or not, I don't want to say pervert, things that change the child's mind or orientation, I think that if we want to like have that whole discussion of nature versus nurture, mm. I feel like are much more complex than just the media you consume. Your outside life is the biggest impact. Your parents, your school system, like who's who's there setting up your morals and morality guide? We have well, to... It's, 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 all, it's all comes down to the parents, man. If, but, if you're a trash parent, mm -hmm. then your child will be brought up by the nanny, the, the teacher, and so forth. If you're a proper parent who has proper discipline, Mate, there's, there's nothing Chinese, so Chinese finger trap, H. Remember, force it, it gets tighter. You get yourself mm -hmm. deeper into the problem. When you relax and just let it happen, don't cause pushbacks. They want pushback because when you push back against something, right? Kids want to rebel by nature. Kids want to rebel by nature. Mm -hmm. In the 80s, right? When there was a huge Christianity movement and like Satanism and other anti what happened? The music started becoming more satanic, rock and roll, heavy metal, you know, glam rock. When people were trying to like they would they would dress up like rock stars dress up like women and just like talk mm. about the devil and all the stuff. In the 90s, right? Like when people like they, they tried to be more conservative in dress, girls started to wear bikinis, guys became more ruthless. Mm. Kids always want to rebel. Whatever the old generation thinks is not okay. Kids will go for it. So, 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 okay, so you're saying that kids right now, they're, they're they'll think it's cool because their parents, is... because people, old fogies like me and you, because let's say for example, if we think we're against it, we think this is whack. Mm. They'll think it's cool because they don't mean you aren't cool to them, right? Mm. They they will go for it. Like you know, here's here's the private. Oh, no, no, you, you mentioned mean, you mentioned GTA. You mentioned GTA, right? You mentioned mm. GTA. This is this is a fact. You can go look this up. GTA One when it first came out, um, when they wanted to market it, they hired this specific lawyer. And what this lawyer did, I forgot his name, but he purposely went to these parent groups and he got them to go protest against it. Right, mm. he purposely got the reports against it, and because he did that, the sales for that game skyrocketed. Oh yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. when you tell somebody that this is bad, this is taboo, this is not good, you people even NWA same banning, thing. Yeah, you know, no, because of that. Hence why banning anything just makes people have a greater desire for, 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 for that thing. Because you're exactly. like, oh, why? Because you're not thinking that like, why is this banned? Why mm -hmm. is this thing banned? And mm -hmm. I want to, but I want to answer. I want to bring this up. Yeah, because obviously you watched Star Wars. Obviously. I didn't watch the latest one. I, I, I after watching, Return of the, I'm like, I'm out. I'm yeah, out. It's, 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 it was it's not trash. for me. So we see these. These were just two regular characters. Yeah, I know that's uh, in, the, in the, the, the pilot Finn. and Ray Fisher. Yeah, he yeah, was, yeah, uh, yeah, the, the stormtrooper that was reformed. Yeah. Yep. So, but there was this movement that believed that they were gay, mm -hmm. and they they kept pushing it and pushing it. Pushing. Oh my gosh, I can just see. But like, there was nothing explicit, nothing written anywhere. That they were gay, but people just inferred just by how they talked to each other and so forth that they were gay. So it now reached up until the very last film of the trilogy. And trilogy was complete garbage, piece of trash, crap. Mm -hmm. Or until the very last film, people said that they felt disappointed that they didn't really fully extend extenuate and fully go through with their gay relationship. And I bring this up because. What you now want is let's take a very popular pro property and put our, our agenda, our views on that property. Because once we do that, 
we're not going to force people to now have to now accept it. But my thing is that that's the, that's the worst tactic possible because what you do is you anger people. Do you know what I've learned in life? Even just me being like a YouTuber, never force people. Yep. Because when people know that they are being forced, they react angrily. You have to just let things flow. And, and you have to now be a little bit more savvy and a little bit more creative in how you want to get people to be accepting of something. And you just got to just be like a wave. But if you're like, no, you must, you must, you must, boom, boom. So this is what, what, what you like. No, here, this is me. People will react angrily. People are like, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't just enforce this on me. And again, I speak for myself. Mm. Bro, I'm one of the most tolerant people out there to, to a point. And this is what people have to accept. You will not meet anybody more tolerant than me. I, t- I told you, I don't care whether you're bi, gay. I don't, I don't, I don't give a crap. But I grew up in Nigeria, in a very religious family. The first time I knew even the concept of gay homosexuality was when I moved to England. Mm. So these groups can't even appreciate that for people like me, I am taken aback when I see two guys kissing. Like when I walk through London and it's like Pride Week or something, and I see people dressed and stuff, I, I'm taken aback. It's, so I'll go one my further. thing is that I go one further. So yeah, yeah. should you now bastardize me and attack me because I'm taken aback and this being enforced upon me will make me feel uncomfortable? So I shouldn't feel on un- un- I shouldn't even feel slightly un- uncomfortable mm-hmm. no. because there are people who plainly just like no 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 screw you and are hateful towards it. Yep. But I'm just slightly uncomfortable. So even me being slightly uncomfortable, like, so you enforce it upon me, I'm like, whoa, chill, relax. That doesn't mean that I hate you. That just means relax. Yeah. No, be, I, you know? It's, 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 look, it's, we do, we're, we're living, we're living in a, in a, in a transitional period, right? Like mm. people, there's going to be pushback. The world is changing and, and it's, 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 it's changing fast for a lot of people. And, and you're right. Like it's, you, you had a certain upbringing and, and you feel like this change is happening and it's, it's, uh, it could be very confusing. It could be very uh, hard to no, understand. But, 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 right, hard pill my, to my thing, no, no, but, but just to put it very clearly, <laughs> if <sighs> we have, how's the best way to explain it? Like, my thing is, I'm not one of those guys that are like, oh my gosh, everyone is gay. What the yeah, hell is no, 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 I'm like, I, I, it's it's. It, <laughs> but it's, you What's... question, you question, you question the reasoning be, behind why is it being pushed so hard? Mm. Correct. Like that, that's yeah. essentially it. Like we're just uh, that we're just trying to understand why. Which I I 100 and like I said, like I'm not. How can I say this? Like you, HH, I don't care. I'll be honest with you. I have the only things that I care about, like as as a man, is when it comes to just helping my fellow man on like on the working class, the lower class. That's it. I don't care what your orientation is, what your race is, what your religion is, whatever the fuck you want to do in your own personal life. Mm. That's between you behind the, your closed doors. I'm not going to get involved. I'll never, I don't care about transsexual bathroom things or, 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 or like all, th- these, these are social problems. These are on people to solve amongst themselves. That's not mm. my concern. I concern more about like when it comes to war, murder, taking over people's lands, when you, when you, when people's rights are being infringed, when pe- person's not even allowed to even live their life. Those are the things that trigger me. This, this to me is, is, it's just a social topic. I'm talking, I don't mean to insult anybody or, or piss mm. anybody off. It's, it's, that, and, and I'm, I'm, you're the same way, HH. You, when we're talking about this, we're talking about this because we just want to understand it. Right mm. now, HH, Newton's third law, every action has an equal and opposite reaction, right? So for everybody like you who, who, who questions about these, like, why, why is this happening? Or why are you doing this? You're just going to create an equal and opposite reaction on the other side. There's some people out there on Twitter that don't like you for whatever reason. They don't like you. Mm. Whatever you're going to support, they're going to take the opposite end, right? Yeah. Just for no reason, just for no reason other than they don't like you. Yeah. They don't care about the other problem. But just because of that, and that's why I say it's like when it comes to something that when you don't agree with it, the best solution often is just not to pay it, pay it no mind. Just that's it. Put it on the side. You, you, if, if it's, let's say, for example, like, for example, co- comic books, Batman, if you think we always thought Robin was whack, right? <laughs> and this just made me think Robin's like, to be honest with you, now it just makes it feel pandering because mm. like he was never like this before. Have you, if you create a new character and you tell me he's bisexual or gay or something like that. I want. I wouldn't mind. That's cool because oh, yeah. they did. There was a lesbian Robin before in mm. the Dark Knight Returns. Uh, the Dark Knight Returns. The Rob. Ro- the Robin in that in that uh, in that comic, which is in the 1980s, by the way. Mm. She was a lesbian, and nobody has a problem with that, 
right? Oh, it yeah, only yeah, becomes yeah, yeah. a problem when it becomes pandering. When you start changing current existing characters, existing and, characters, and, and, it's like that's see, that's when you are not see. My thing is, why don't you create mm. a new character that's gay? That's fine. No, but and, no, and, you have to create an existing character because that existing character already has traction. Because, because what exactly. because what you want is people's eyes. Because see, if you create a new character who is gay. People are like, oh, the guys can get okay, cool. H-H, I'm gonna ignore that. But outrage. now you can't ig- you can't ignore it if it's someone that's existing that is already popular already. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's, no, it's a discussion. Have you. It's a discussion because like HH again, they want a reaction. They want a reaction. Mm-hmm. Now, besides the point, HH, like that thing that we're talking about in, in Star Wars, that's not a new genre. There's a whole genre in like Japanese uh, culture, which it's called like Yaoi, which is Y A O I, mm-hmm. um, where they uh, take two existing uh like they take two existing like characters, male characters, and they put them in a gay relationship. Now, the reason why I know about this is South Park made an episode about it, right? There was this random, there's these two random characters in South Park. Like they're not main characters or anything. They're just like side characters in the background. They're called Tweak and Craig, right? And just randomly in one episode, they just like, the girls start drawing these two together in a relationship. Right, and they like they sort of like force like like and they were making fun of that sort of genre. They were, but they were also commentating commentating about it. Um, and so for me, like whenever I I, I uh, like when I see like when I see this stuff, it's because nowadays like little girls they find that kind of stuff exciting. Like not girls, like kids in general, because it's taboo to their parents. It has pushback. Therefore, mm. it is something that is exciting because you're not supposed to be doing it because the, mm. the 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 powers that be. Don't want it, and people love the forbidden fruit. When you tell somebody you don't, you you can't do something, it makes them want to do it oh, yeah, even yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you tell them something is fruit. not good or it's bad, it makes them want to do it even more. And that's why it, these these guys who, who like make these decisions, you don't think it's gonna cause? They, they don't know that it's, it's, it's gonna cause uh, controversy. But nope. guess what? Controversy, controversy sells. sells. Controversy sells. They want this. They, just, they want. They want us to talk about it. Which it worked. Now, me and you for the next half hour, we're talking about Robin, which a character that's irrelevant. Like the last time Robin was relevant for me, like I'll be honest, I'm a fan of um, Under the Red Hood, one of my mm. favorite pieces of oh, Batman yeah. media ever. Like I think, I think, um, like Robin in that one, he killed it. The way he comes back, he become the he the way he remarkets himself as the Red Hood. I always, I never was a fan of uh, the original Robin. I always thought that thought that he was uh, no no no. I, no. See, right, just, I've, I've always hated Robin. Like for me, see, I'm a huge Batman fan. Specifically, mm. Tim Burton's Batman. The whole point of Batman is he's by himself. He is solo yep. guy. He's he's a loner. He's lonesome. He's an introvert. Mm-hmm. Once you bring in a guy that's wears bright red, yellow, green, pink, purple, I'm like, what? With a, with a flipping, I'm like, what the heck is this, is this clown doing? You know. So, see, but 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 see, but, quickly, Richard, see, but mm-hmm. my thing though is, what's your intention? Is your intention just for people to talk, or is your intention for people to be more accepting of people who are bisexual? What's now, my, your intention? My assumption, like I hope, like because I want to believe in the betterment of humanity, is they're just trying to be, make people more tolerant to the idea, to sort of uh, just make it more normalized in a sense where people are and, just more tolerant to people. And, this, and Red, this is this the right? So you, you want them to be more tolerant? Is this the right tactic? I mean, they're trying to use popular media. I don't, I don't believe it's the right tactic because. This like look for for a lot of people that let's say for example they're maybe maybe like they're they're like forty just, 50 years old thirty so, years so, so, old for every quick red like, yep. so we just wrap for it because it, yep. because I always forget some of my points mm-hmm. the best way of doing it in my view I don't know whether you or you agree yep. is leave characters as they are but to make this established character meet a character who's bisexual meet a character who is gay or so forth meet a character who is a a lesbian mm-hmm. and you don't enforce it, but it just comes to, oh yeah, I'm lesbian, I'm a bisexual. You just but it's just slowly blends in. So people are like, oh, that's interesting, he's bisexual. But hey, Batman is cool with this character. And I Batman mean, doesn't treat Batman or Superman or Spider-Man or Spider-Man doesn't treat this character any differently because they're bisexual, gay, or so forth. That's probably a better way for, for people to probably be a bit more my, accepting H- towards H- it. H- H- here's my here's my issue. Like it's, for me, it's I don't like when they rewrite media to push an agenda. I really don't like. For example, that's a big reason why I didn't like Captain Marvel. Mm. And Cap- Captain Marvel uh, in the original comic, uh, her husband uh, or her man um, was a superhero. He was the original Captain Marvel, and he explodes one day, but he passes on his powers to her and makes her the new Captain Marvel. She becomes a woman, Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. Right, and that's how she. That's the origins of her power. Uh, that's the origins of her power. Now, 
in the new movie that they made, they made the man Marvel, who who who, 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 who like gives her the powers. They made him evil. They made him like this patriarchal, like I trained you and I'll do mm-hmm. put you back in your place and yada yada yada. And they made the woman who gave her her power was this just old scientist lady who's mm-hmm. just like a, a a female role model of sorts for her. Right, where they're just trying to push this like feminist agenda because, like, even in it, she was like, I don't need no man and like stuff like that. Like, it, like, and, 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 no man. yeah, like, it, it, was, it was that's literally what it was. And, like, again, like, I'm not against feminism or anything like that. It's just that you're forcing an agenda onto a character. Girl that, power. Literally, it, it, it just never existed. Like, the, the, the things, and I feel like also it defeats the purpose because if you're saying, like, like, you're actually saying that only an exceptional female can compete or overdo a man. When no, that's not true. Any woman can be a man, anything like in like nowadays, like not maybe not in physical attributes. Let's say when you talk about the elite athletes, but on par, like I know a ton of women that can kick guys' asses because like they're very, very well trained, or they, they can kick their asses in running and training, and like or or, or in, in in maths and sciences. Like it's just, but like that concept that they have, like it, it's almost like when these corporations are trying to sell these things, they they, they go into exceptionalism. Where they make them like, oh, they're almost only only the exceptional can overdo it or like pre- break mm. the patriarchy and stuff like that. Now, this is what comes into Robin for me. What bothers me is that like, like, um, is that, uh, like you could have like what you said is just like create a new character, bring a new character in. Like that you don't have to like remix an old character and mm. bring this into really force the conversation. Now, personally. I feel like with Robin, it kind of does work because there's multiple Robins. There's like five or six Robins, um, especially right now in the current universe. I'm pretty sure like all of them coexist because you have Damian Wayne, who's now the, I think pretty much the current Robin. You have Tim, uh, sorry, uh, you have uh, Jason Todd, who's under the Red Hood. That's the Red Hood is his new mantle right now. You have Dick Grayson, who's Nightwing, um, and then you have now Tim Drake, who was Red Robin, um, but now he's Gay Robin um so like he's like uh or red robin like he like so i guess like, it kind of works with him because like he's not he's an inoffensive character to really try and i feel like dc thought so like look this is just one guy we could even if it doesn't work out we could easily just like push him out of the story again mm. um he's not really uh like you said he's not like batman he's only he only he's only relevant because of the main character of batman um but like honestly i, I to really summarize my point like i really don't I don't like I've become like I said desensitized to this like where it's not something that I find like because they've done this with everything they made a female Wolverine they made a female Iron Man and you know what they did with the female Iron Man which I felt was the most offensive like they called her Iron Heart like oh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah that was that was yeah, like, the, like like Riri or something yeah no her yeah she's she's uh, this black girl that like stumbles into Iron Man's off like you know and, and they give her make her Iron Heart like you have uh, like the female uh, Wolverine now she's like in charge of it like they have an Asian Hulk. Uh, they have uh, like um, what's it called? There's gonna be a black Superman coming out. Like for me, I, personally, I, I, I'd also read as well. Like that's what, uh, people keep hits me on this. What was supposed to be not the, the 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 this Miles Morales? Mm. Yeah, like and this could be from a guy where no, see, see, this one people don't understand because they maybe I'm different in this. Spider Man is one of my favorite characters. Yeah. Ever since I was young, I was reading his comics. The Spider Man I know is a white. Caucasian man. Peter Parker is white. Mm. And I'm a fan of him. And he's white. But I'm also, I I, I truly connect with Spawn. Al yep. Simmons, who is a black, black. hitman, and, yep. and so forth. I connect with, with Blade. I connect with Storm. I connect with Bishop. But because those guys from the inception were black. So I connect with those guys. Don't now change Spider-Man to black to now appeal to me. Yeah, No, I, he's white. And I leave mean, him as freaking white. I mean, that's 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 the problem. Hh, is that like there? It's become it's it's all pandering, right? It's all pandering. That's why I, I don't find it offensive anymore. Like it's not it's not it doesn't bother. Like back in the day, I was I was I used to be triggered. Like, well, why you change it? Just make your own character. Now I'm like, oh, whatever. They're all fictional characters. Like like Goku, for example. People say he's Asian. He's not. He's an alien from from mm. the planet Vegeta. He's not Asian. He's not white. He's not anything. He's a cartoon character. And he oh, can, like, so Goku is from a planet called Vegeta. Yeah, he's not. He's not from Earth. So why is Vegeta called Vegeta? 
because he's the prince of all saints so the planet he's named oh, after the planet okay. the, the thing is the pun the pun on it is like every every uh saying has a vegetable name like oh. goku's real name is kakarot which is carrot oh, broccoli, carrot. broccoli. Yeah. literally yeah and vegeta because he's the king of all saints vegeta is for vegetable like the oh they like uh, toriyama literally went opened his fridge and named all his characters after oh yeah yeah just foods. after vegetables foods like yeah like it's it's this i think let's just run this no this has been no this has been a really really good good con for months. It's been really yeah, absolutely fun. also a pleasure man yeah so so guys remember guys you know comments below give us your 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 your, your thoughts so obviously you can reach me and red our twitter handles will be in the description box if you want to mm -hmm. answer us any questions or follow us you can follow us with our twitter handles which will be in the description box Definitely. and then and any, topics, want, any thoughts yeah like guys like any topics you guys want us to talk about anything mm -hmm. at all like leave a comment you could always dm me if you want to leave a comment yeah i know some of the <laughs> some of the topics me and hh talk about are taboo like sometimes i like you know what's funny HH, i just want to say this real quick. like when, mm -hmm. we, when we did the last time we had a discussion about like uh, homosexuality and all that stuff mm -hmm. like a lot of people were afraid to talk about it they're worried that they'd get canceled or something like that mm -hmm. so they would talk to me off off uh, offline where they'd like send me messages and say like they'll ask me about like my opinion on it like oh, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, so yeah, I always yeah, thought yeah. that was funny. So guys, yeah, like my DMs are open. Like the comments, mm. you guys could feel free to like. No, 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 because cause I remember that thing. I think you even retweeted this as well. Mm. I think it's from Ibra something who says, "Oh man, I really appreciate yeah. uh, the things that you're talking about." You know, and it's like, oh wow, like because because my thing is, look, if you guys are into it, we'll we'll, we'll keep because I'm doing it because there's interest. Because obviously, I'm super busy with doing the football stuff and everything, mm -hmm. but. I'm always about if guys enjoy something, we're hey, down. Man, I'm, I'm and, like, and, and like I said, there's no topic that we want to talk. Like, I, I, I fear, guys, I grew up on Eminem and Jay-Z, that song Renegade, where he's like, Renegade, never been afraid to say what's on my mind at any yeah. given time or day. <laughs> like, I, I, I fear I fear no, nobody but God. So like, if you guys have any comments mm. you want us to talk about, I'm not afraid of anything. Man. I'll, I'll talk about it. We'll, we can have, well, I'll give my honest discussion. I'm not an expert at no, anything. No, but I, think, I think that's the key thing here. Don't come for us for the answers. We are just two guys giving our honest opinion Literally. on topics. So, no, it's, it's a, oh, right, no, no. It's just guys. And I think the issue we have in this world is people don't want to just have an honest discussion because they don't want to offend people or say the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. And the issue with society is, no, just talk. Yeah, make like, make a mistake. Look like a fool, but talk. Talk that's, it out. That's don't keep like, it in. Mean, talk it out. People don't talk enough. You know. Absolutely. Like I don't. I don't like when I go for these. Like I said, like I don't I, ever. I, the only people that I go out uh, go after, I go after the people with power. Like that, mm -hmm. the people that I will criticize heavily. The people that I will like actually be passionate for. When it comes to like social issues and stuff like that, like I'm not against any of uh, anybody or any sect group or or believe that they're lesser than or they shouldn't have any rights or anything like that. Like in the end, let the world play out how it is, and like mm -hmm. we'll see what happens, right? Like, but like that's why I said like. Guys, any topics? Bring them up. Let's talk about them. Let's say, let's say, okay. like, if you disagree, all you have to do is disagree with me. In my opinion, gets canceled out because literally, I'm just a guy. Yeah, That's man. It. So, guys, we'll see you guys next Sunday, man. Peace so, out, so, so, guys. so, 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 so,